The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Well, welcome back to True News. I'm Rick Wiles. This radio program, as you know, uh, we've been at, in the forefront since 2007 of exposing the lies about the identity of Barack Hussein Obama, if that's his real name, we don't know. He has various aliases, including Harrison J. Bonnell and uh, Barry Satoro. Uh, the attorney, Mr. Pigeon, uh, he's come across the name um, Barack Ubayed. Uh, we really don't know who this guy is in the White House. As you know, his records are sealed. And the national news media doing, uh, you know, uh, working overtime to confuse the public, conceal uh, the truth about this man. Uh, we've we've got a battle on our hands to reveal to the American public that this guy in the White House is an imposter. Uh, what's happening is it's so bizarre. It's just it's this is so bizarre. I mean, it, it, the, the the evidence is so overwhelming that. The information that he's put out so far is fraudulent, and I'm talking about the, the the digital image of the birth certificate. We've had experts on this radio program, experts in in document scanning. These aren't politicians. They, they're not political activists. They're business people. They're experts in their field, and they have told us this digital image on the White House website is a total a fraud. It, it it can be picked apart easily, and uh, you know why nobody is is talking about it. I'm talking about people in power, people in positions of authority. Why they're not talking about it is the most strange thing I've ever seen in my life. Anyhow, we're going to stay on this thing and until we make it so embarrassing for the FBI and the Congress and the intel agencies and and the federal courts. Uh, we're just going to stay on it until they're so embarrassed they have to do something uh, about this uh, imposter in the White House. Well, one of the uh, writers, one of the contributors to the uh, Canada Free Press that I, I often read, especially if, if if the fire in my bones starts to cool down and I need to stoke the coals, and I'll, I'll read this guy's articles, uh, retired Colonel uh, Lawrence Sellen. 29 years of service in the U.S. Army, a veteran of Afghanistan and Iraq. And he, he writes, he uh, contributes uh, articles to Canada Free Press and other websites. And I have him on the line right now because I, I, I want him to share with us his thoughts about why we have probably the biggest constitutional crisis in the history of this republic. Uh Colonel, Colonel Sellen, welcome to True News. Oh, thanks very much, Rick. Uh, Larry, let's start out. Uh, start. Let's start out with your 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 background. I, I know you you've spent 29 years uh, in the U.S. Army Reserve. Uh, tell us more about your your past. Uh, yes, uh, I retired from the reserves at the end of last year. Uh, I have um, uh, branch qualifications and. Uh, assignment experiences in special forces and, and infantry, chemical, and, and medical services, and I graduated from the U.S. Army uh, War College. Uh, I also have a doctoral degree in, in physiology with a specialty in electrophysiology and biophysics and spent half of my civilian career in, in the pharmaceutical industry and half in the IT industry at an international level. I, uh, also have somewhere between 150 and 200 publications in science business. And as a, a columnist, uh, starting with United Press International and now with Canada Free Press. Good. All right. Well, I, I've read many of your, your articles uh, posted at Canada Free Press. It's a great website. And uh, you're making very convincing arguments uh, about the crisis that we have right now with this man in the White House, Barry Satoro, Barack Hussein Obama. And, you know, and the one thing that I, I get so frustrated, because I, I have congressmen on this program, I have people from Washington, and I, I, I you know, at times, even the, the good guys that are on the program that I like, I want to shout at them. I was like, why won't somebody in Washington demand 
the truth about Barack Hussein Obama. It, it just it frustrates me so much, Larry. We've got men and women in Afghanistan and Iraq and around the world who are putting their lives on the line defending the country, and yet we can't get some politicians in Washington to to do the same thing, to put their careers on the line, to say, look, what's going on is not right. We need we need uh, the truth to come out. Uh, what's that make you feel like as a, as a, as a vet? Well, I, I think you're absolutely right, Rick. Uh, it, it, there really is no gray area here. Uh, it, you know, they know what the law is. They know what the Constitution says. So either they're afraid for some reason to uh, do the right thing, or they're actually complicit in the cover-up. It, I mean, it's really that simple. I, I agree. I, I can't define it any other way. That's my position. They're, they're either terrified of what has taken place, which w- means a coup d'etat. There, there's, been, there's been an overthrow of the country, and they know it, and they're afraid, or they are part of it. There, there's no other explanation. Well, there's been a great deal of misinformation pumped out into the public domain about uh, Obama's eligibility. I, I, I mean, if we start at the beginning, uh, Barack Hussein Obama has never been eligible for the presidency, never. Uh, and nevertheless, all this misinformation is going out to the public. Some of the mis- misinformation is due to ignorance. Some of the misinformation is, is deliberately out there to confuse the public. Uh, it, uh, it, it's as if the, our, our leaders in, in, in Congress and in Washington, D.C. Are, are trying to complicate the issue or trying to make the American people feel that it's too complicated for them to understand when it really is very, very simple. Uh, If you look at uh, what the law is, what the Constitution says, uh, what uh, uh, of the binding precedent, actually the single binding precedent, uh, dealing with uh, natural-born citizenship, it it is quite clear. It it is, in my opinion, unambiguous. Well, you know, several weeks ago I I had a conversation with a young attorney. It it had nothing to do with uh, Obama, but in in the course of us, you know, just chit-chatting and waiting on a meeting to start, uh, I brought the subject up, and I realized, listening to this young attorney, how dumbed down the attorneys have become through the law schools. He had no concept at all about natural-born citizenship. He argued with me that Obama could is a natural-born citizen. <laughs> And I kept pointing out to him, his father is a Kenyan. And he says, well, he, but he was born in Hawaii. That makes him a natural-born citizen. I, thought, I wanted to say, how did you get through law school? But, you know, there's no point in arguing with the guy. Take some, moment, uh, say some, take some time here, Larry. Uh, let's talk about this concept of natural-born citizenship. Well, the, the idea of, I, I mean, people, the, the American citizens need, really need to understand that there is a distinction between a, a citizen, even a citizen that's born in the United States, and a natural-born citizen. They're, they are two different concepts. Uh, the, the natural-born citizen concept, uh, which, is, which is written into uh, you know, a, a section, uh, Article 2, Section 1, and Clause 5, the qualifications to be president, which says, no person except a natural-born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of the Constitution shall be eligible for the office of president. Now, you can even see in those, that one sentence that uh, there's a distinction between citizen and natural-born citizen. So the concept of natural-born citizenship uh, came uh, approximately 30 years earlier than the adoption of the Constitution in, in a book uh, written by Emerick uh, David Tal, who, uh, which is called the Law of the Nations, and and in there he specifically describes what a natural-born citizen is, which is a, a, a someone who is born in a country of parents, of two parents, that parents of, who are both citizens. So uh, people uh, have been either either as I said, either they're ignorant of what the concept is, or they've been led astray. Uh, through misinformation that has been uh, sent out into the, into the public. Well, the, the national news media has worked very hard to confuse the public, uh, and I think it, there is a there is a mixture of both uh, uh, 
that some people in the news media simply are dumbed down themselves. They have no idea what they're talking about. I think others are very, uh, very guilty of deliberately confusing the public. They're 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 working to help the Obamaites uh, confuse the American public. They don't want the American people to to understand uh, what's going on. I mean, they they use the term birther. You know, they you know if if if, if you're a, a if you're a citizen who's, who wants the nation to abide by the Constitution, you're called a birther. That's supposed to be a derogatory term. They're very good at these propaganda techniques. So what do we do, Larry? How, how do we, how do we um, break through the, the mental walls that they're putting up there to keep the public confused? Well... Uh, the, the short answer is, is trying to tell the truth and keep, keeping the pressure on. But what what has concerned me very much is is we seem uh, to have a gangster government. And I, I can't tell you, Rick, how many letters I've gotten from readers who say I've written to my congressman or senator many, many times. I either get no answer or, or something that doesn't make sense. Uh, there is so much frustration out there. It, you know, it's... it's, it's as if we can no longer petition our government to, for the redress of grievances. So, so what does a citizen do? It, it, it's like uh, the mafia coming and taking over a city. You know, they control the mayor, they control the courts, they control the police, they control the, uh, the press. What is a citizen to do in the, in the face of a complete breakdown of the rule of law? And that's what we're beginning to see, and I'm getting very, very concerned about it. I am too. And... I've been saying this for years on the program. Our our government is run by a mafia, and and it's not Democratic or Republican. Both parties are are owned and controlled by this this criminal regime, and and both parties are 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 part of this operation. But it is a criminal mafia. I mean, Larry, look what's going on with the ATF. The ATF took thousands of high-powered weapons to Mexico and put them in the hands of the drug dealers. If you or I took one gun over the border, we'd, we'd be spending 20 to 30 years in a federal prison. But we have ATF agents taking thousands of guns over the border, giving them to the drug cartels, and some of those guns have been used to kill U.S. Border Patrol agents. And nobody's... <laughs> I mean, just there's just a smattering of opposition to this scandal. I mean, this is a this is outrageous that our government is doing this kind of behavior, and it's clear to me that what they were planning to do was to use this as the justification for a for more gun control in the United States. They wanted to say, "Look at all these guns going into Mexico. They're coming from Texas. They're coming from Arizona. We have proof of it." We've we have all these guns in, in Mexico in the hands of the drug cartel. And we've traced them back to Texas and Mexico. I guess you did. You're the ones who took them there. This is what they're doing to us. Everything that they do, Larry, is is it's like it's criminal. It's it's subversive. It, it, it it's I mean they're doing it with the banks. They're, we're we're being raped by international bankers. What is this thing out of control? It's. I, I think it's close to being out of control. I, I think we're in a situation now where, where politics has trumped the Constitution, has trumped the rule of, of law. Uh, John Adams once said that uh, you know we're, we should create a government of laws, not of men, and I think that has changed. We now have a government of men, not of laws, and uh, I, I think personally that we're in the most. Uh, serious situation since the Civil War. I do too. And Larry, I, I said when Obama was running, this guy, this guy will drive us to Civil War. I've been saying it on this radio program since 2007. He will drive the nation to Civil War. He is a Marxist revolutionary and his, his assignment is to destroy the Republic and he wants revolution he wants insurrection <laughs> there I, I think what they're doing with the TSA is a deliberate provocation 
of the American people to do things so outrageous, like forcing a 95-year-old granny in a wheelchair uh, dying of leukemia to take off her adult diaper. If it had been my grandmother, that I would have put that diaper in somebody's mouth. I'm, I'm not going to put up with this stuff, Larry. Well, I, I think there are a lot of people who feel that way, and I, I think we need to stop uh, listening to what Obama says and look very carefully at, at his actions. Uh, if yeah, I mean, this gets back to the, the very issue of why the Founding Fathers put the term natural-born citizen in there. It, 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 it's about a, allegiance to one country. Uh, Obama uh, was born with allegiance to two countries. I'm not, personally, I'm not sure where his allegiance, allegiances lie uh, at, at any point in time, whether, you know, whether he's uh, favoring some kind of, of international uh, internationalization of the United States or what. But look, if, if we this is like the Founding Fathers' worst nightmare. Look at what he's doing. Just last week, just last week when there was the execution of the uh, individual who was convicted of, of, of rape and murder of a, of a young woman in Texas. Did Obama back Texas? No, he didn't. He backed Mexico and, and the, the UN, UN against Texas. Uh, if you go back and look at the Arizona, Arizona immigration law, he opposed that in favor of Mexico. And then he went. So, and then he went to El Paso, and he mocked the Texans and the Arizonans who were upset about illegal immigrants coming across the border onto their properties. He mocked them. He said, "What do they want me to do? Put a moat around the country with alligators?" I mean, th- th- pure arrogance. Yes. Trying well, to make people mad at him. As I said, we, we need to, to, to look at his actions and ask the question, are these the actions of a president who has sole allegiance to the United States? It's a common sense question. That's right. I see. I, I, he's not an American. And, you know, one, when I discovered that Joseph Stalin was not a Russian, I didn't know that for a long, long time. How, you know, how, how, how did a guy get in power in, in Moscow who killed, you know, a hundred million Russians? Well, I found out he wasn't a Russian. He wasn't born in Russia. I think he was Ukrainian. And, and so he was able to do it, Larry, because they weren't his people. It, it didn't matter to him. And that's what we've got right now. We have a guy in the White House who is not an American. He doesn't give a flip what's going on here. He doesn't care. It's not his country. In fact, he hates the country. He wrote a book called Dreams from My Father. It's not The book is not dreams about my father, dreams of my father. It's dreams from my father. Who was his father? A Marxist economist who hated Western civilization, who talked in the 1960s about a revolution that would destroy the the colonial powers. That's what Barack Obama is doing. He is fulfilling his father's dreams. And, you know, I, ever since this guy, got, you know, started running, I kept telling people, we have a Marxist revolutionary. This is a revolution. This is a takeover of the United States of America. And here we are now, we're three years into it, and, and the republic is teetering. You know, I know you know these words from the Declaration. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator. And there's the phrase that Obama cannot say, endowed by their creator. He always omits those words. With certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, here it is. Listen, folks, this is where we're at right now. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Now, Larry, right now, for me to read those words on the air, 
Um, some people in Washington would consider that statement inflammatory. But we are talking about upholding the principles that started this country. And our founding father said, look, when any government gets so out of control that it no longer is uh, governing according to the consent of the governed, it's the right of the people to alter or abolish that government. And where we're at right now is that we have to come as, a, as the American people and say, look, the constitutional republic, there's nothing wrong with it. We don't have to alter or abolish the constitutional republic. What we were given as a framework by our founding fathers, what we have to abolish is the criminal regime that has hijacked the federal government. Well, I, I agree completely, uh, Rick, and I think you're in a way paraphrasing what Ab- Abraham Lincoln said. He said, we're not fighting against the Constitution, but we're fighting against the people who are perverting the Constitution. And I, I think that is the case here. We have people in our government now who are perverting the Constitution and undermining the rule of law. Larry, among um, among the uh, uh, American military personnel active and uh, retired, what's the what's the mindset of most of the guys right now on this on on these topics? Well, I, I think that's a difficult question to answer. Um, I, uh, I mean, I can't speak for others, but mm-hmm. I, I think at least from the letters that I'm getting, which include uh, people in the military services, there's almost uh, 100% dissatisfaction with the situation as it is. So people are very, very uh, unhappy. And I think it's there's, a, there's, there's much more boiling under the surface uh, with uh, with the citizens uh, than I think the politicians realize. I think it's it's ready to explode. If the regime started to use heavy-handed tactics to suppress opposition inside the country, and I'm talking really heavy-handed tactics, um, do you you think most U.S. military would um, uh, side with the regime or would they they bolt and side with the public? You know, I really don't like to think about such a scenario. Mm -hmm. As a military officer, I'm very resistant to the idea of the military getting involved in in politics. Personally, I think this is the duty of of the citizens, of the civilians, of whoever is left in the government that believes in the Constitution and believes in the rule of law. Yeah, but they're they're going to call the military out to put us down when we try to break the power of this regime. That's the problem. There's a lot of a lot of law-abiding American citizens who are ready to do something legal, but knowing that if they really take a stand, the regime is going to use every weapon in its disposal, including microwave weapons and and sound weapons. They're going to use their whole arsenal of non-lethal weapons against the American public. That's what they. That's what we're concerned about. If we go out here and say to this regime. We're going to get rid of you. We're going to restore this country. They're going to call the military out on us. That's what we're concerned about. Mm. So what? what's going to happen? Well, as I, I really hope that it doesn't come to that. I, I think uh, we, we, that's why we, everyone has to act now, get together, mobilize, and act now uh, to prevent uh, Obama going through another election cycle without... The, the issue of eligibility being addressed without the ac- allegations regarding uh, felonies committed uh, uh, by Obama or uh, uh, facilitated by Obama both in and out of office. Uh, I, I think these questions have to be addressed before we can go into another election cycle, and that's why we need to, to mobilize and act now uh, so, so you in think, all the legal mm-hmm. ways possible. Mm-hmm. So, y- your recommendation is uh, to use the upcoming election uh, a- as the referendum on Obama. I-, I don't think we should go into the next election without the issue of uh, his ineligibility being addressed, without these the issues of the alleged uh, uh, forgeries of his birth certificate, uh, the alleged forgery of his 
uh, selective service uh, registration, uh, the alleged uh, the fact that you might have stolen a social security number. I, I, I think. But that, who's going to bring it up, Larry? I mean, Romney. Who's going to bring these subjects up? Nobody's going to touch them. This is the problem we're dealing with. Yeah, uh, it, it, it is a problem indeed, and I, I think it's going to be up to the people, ordinary citizens organizing locally uh, in a, in a bottom-up effort to uh, to combat. Yeah, I mean, Boehner's out playing golf with him. Mm. <laughs> you know, what do we do? I mean, we, we gave the Republicans a, a massive electoral victory, the biggest congressional victory since the 1920s, and, and Boehner goes out and plays golf with him. Well, as I said, I think there's a lot of anger uh, boiling uh, underneath uh, the, the, the citizens of the United States, and, and I think we need to tap into that anger and, and, and you know, direct, direct it in a proper way uh, to uh, you know, restore the Constitution and restore the, the rule of law. And I agree. That has to be done by putting uh, whatever pressure is necessary on our elected officials and, and, and honest government officials. And the clock is ticking for us to and get this done. the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. If we're going to do it, folks, without great distress in the country, we've got to do it immediately. Well, uh, we can't let this go. We can't right. allow these, uh, you know, a violation of the Constitution undermining the rule of law. We can't let that happen because we might be afraid of, of uh, you know, somebody riding somewhere. It's, what we're doing then is submitting to blackmail. And when you submit to blackmail, you just get more blackmail. So what is the next thing going to be? That if we don't vote for Obama, you know, they'll riot. Everybody has to vote for Obama or, or people will start rioting. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. We have to, we have to be honest with ourselves and the condition of the country and address these issues now. If we let it go into the next election, I, I, I think we're going to have serious problems in the future. Yes, and things are shaping up right now. We could have a colossal financial crisis before this year is even out. That's my major concern. Uh, I'm out of time for this interview. My guest today, Lawrence Sullen, uh, retired colonel, 29 years of service in the U.S. Army Reserve, veteran of Afghanistan and Iraq. You can read his articles at Canada Free Press, a great website, CanadaFreePress.com. Uh, colonel Sullen, thank you. Appreciate you coming on True News today. No, thank you, Rick. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.